1527. Spanish explorer Francisco Pizarro discovers the largest and most advanced civilization in the Americas, the Empire of the Incas. They believe the fertility and wealth of their society is a gift from the heavens, a gift they must repay through religious sacrifice. On September 8, 1995, anthropologist Johann Reinhardt and his assistant Miguel Sarate find the most important mummy of a sacrificial Inca child. They call her Juanita, and her discovery on the Peruvian mountain Nevado and Pato is as accidental as her perfectly preserved body. When I decided to climb on Pato, it was really to get some nice shots of the, the adjacent erupting volcano of Sabancaya. I'd never thought there'd be anything up there because it was permanently snow covered. But the volcanic ash from Mount Sabancaya had drifted onto Ampatu. A layer of dark soot helps to melt the snow cap, exposing a mysterious cloth wrapped bundle. I asked my friend to stand by the mummy bundle because this would help for scale for photos. And then uh, I thought it might be better if the mummy was moved slightly. And when he did it, all of a sudden, we were both startled when we were looking into the face of this Inca child. He said he was having real trouble even lifting it at all. And I thought maybe it was still stuck to the ice. Turned out it wasn't. It weighed over 100 pounds. The weight tells Reinhardt that this is a unique find. With the exception of her face, which has been exposed to the sun, this is a frozen mummy that has not dried out. Scientific analysis shows the mummy is female, 14 or 15 years old, and that she was probably sacrificed around 1470. At the time of her discovery, she is the only frozen Inca girl in the world. Using the 3D imaging, Dr. Fishman is able to perform a virtual autopsy by cutting into Juanita's skull with a computer instead of a scalpel. You can see the orbit, the socket for the eye looks normal on the left. But you see the right, you can actually see the eye, but you see how small the socket is, it's deformed. Then when you rotate, you can see why the orbit, the lateral wall of the orbit's fractured, and there's a big fracture going into the skull. That's what's really amazing, that none of us were there. There's no proof what did or didn't happen, but yet based on the information from the imaging, we can basically put the scenario together. She may have a peaceful expression on her face. She may look very calm, but she was killed very brutally. She has a fractured skull. So as you look at her, remind yourself of the manner in which she died.